Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at a number of different ways to do sliders. I get the question probably at least a couple times a week, how can I do an image slider or a text slider or a portfolio slider or something like that inside of ClickFunnels? And last week, I introduced you to this site here. I um, fixed it up a little bit for Susan. And what we did is we just came in and we put this text slider slider in the middle of the screen here. And what I want to do is go in depth on how this really works out. Now this code, I got it somewhere on the internet, but I'll tell you, if you, if you Google this, just a simple slider, you're going to find a hundred examples of guys pretty much all using exactly the same code. And it's, it's pretty simple and is very, very powerful once you understand how this works. Most important part is this line right here, which is known as a conditional or ternary operator. Essentially what it does is it replaces the need to use an if else statement. But what I want to do is go through here and go into micro detail on how exactly this works. If you're not concerned about that micro detail, just fast forward a while until you don't see the screen anymore and you can see how to set it up inside of ClickFunnels because although I got it you know, off the, the internet somewhere, you have to modify it a little bit depending on the case that you're using it inside of ClickFunnels. If you're using it for text, if you're using it for images, if you're using it for elements, it's going to be slightly different. So how this works is we start off by setting a variable. So VAR, of course, means variable. And then in this case here, we're saying current. So the current slide you're going to see on the screen, we're going to set that initially to zero. The reason why you set it to zero, because in jQuery code, which is what we're using here, they use zero indexing or zero based indexing, meaning if you put an array together, which an array is nothing more than what you see right down here below it. An array is just a series of items. And if you put an array together, what jQuery says is that first item is number zero. And then it's number one, two, and three. So that's what we have here. We have zero, one, two, three. So now we set our next variable to something we're calling slides. And again, now we have an array, the uh, square brackets around here indicate an array, and we have our four items in here. And again, the indexing on that is zero, one, two, and three. So now when we call it, when we say, give us slide three, it's just going to give us this text right here. And what we're going to do is because we're going to use our current and we're going to keep adding one to it until we get up to three and then we're going to go back to zero. And so that rotates us through. So we're going to say, give us slide one, give us slide two, give us slide three, give us slide four, and then go back to zero and start all over again. So the loop just continues running forever. Now the loop is set up right here with this set interval function. That again is just basically a loop that just keeps running and running as long as there's some condition in here to run it and there's nothing inside of it that tells it to stop. And what it's going to do is it's going to loop through every 2000 milliseconds or every two seconds. Okay. So what we come down here then is to this, which I said is the most important line. So up here we set current to zero. Well, as we come through here, like I said, we got to loop through. We got to go current one, current two, current three, slide one, slide two, slide three. So we start off with zero, but right away we change it from zero to one. And I'll show you that in a second. So when you're setting this up, generally speaking, whatever you have here for your slide zero, you want to put that in as in this case here, because we're doing text. So I made the first one be bold because that's what my slide zero is. And as soon as we come into this function right here, we're going to change it from slide zero to slide one. So initially somebody will see as the page is loading, be bold. As soon as this uh, function kicks in, it's going to flip that to uh, slide number one, which will be be efficient. So again, here we're going to say current equals. Now we got our conditional statement right here followed by what do you do if the conditional statement is true? 
we're going to add one to current. So if it's true, and I'll talk about how you figure out if it's true or not, if this part here is true, then this says current, current equals current plus one. So the first time we come through, current was equal to zero. So zero plus one equals one. So now current gets number one. And so every time we come through, we look at the condition and we say, if that condition is true, then we're going to add one to it. Now, what's going to happen is once we get up to current being equal to three, well, we don't have a number four. So we have to go back to zero. So in this case here, the, the condition here will say, if it is three, and I'll, I'll go into more detail in a second. If it is three, then we're going to do what the false result is, which is zero. So then in this case here, it's going to be current equals zero, and we're going to go back to be bold again. Okay. So what this current with the condition in the middle here says, as you probably already figured it out, it says, if current is equal to three, then we're going to go back to one. I'm sorry, back to zero. So it's going to keep adding it up. Zero, one, two, three. Once it gets to three, the condition says that is, that is false. And then we're going to go back to zero. So what the condition actually says is if current is not equal to slides length minus one, then do this. So the first time you come through, it's going to be zero. And the exclamation mark equals means not equals. So if it was two equal signs next to each other, it would mean equals in a conditional statement like this. So it says if zero, first time we're coming through at zero, if zero is not equal to slides dot length, well, slides length is four because we have four items in here. And remember, this is called slides. So it says how many slides do we have? It says we got four slides and we want to subtract off one because again, we got zero based indexing. So we always want to subtract off one. So we know uh, what is that top number that we're looking for. And so we got basically the number here is three. So if zero, first time we're coming through, if zero is not equal to three, then do this. Well, of course, zero is not equal to three. Well, the next time we come through, it's going to be one, it's going to be two, and then it's going to be three. And when we get to three, we're going to say three is not equal to three. Well, that's false. So because it's false, we're going to put zero here and current is going to become zero and bring us back to the top. So hopefully I made that clear enough there. Now, the next thing is just something very basic. Again, what we're going to say is this headline. And again, I came in here. Let me just pop out of here. I came into the element itself. And we're going to open that up. And we're going to go down and click on the hashtag down here. And we're going to grab this out as our CSS ID selector, 72580. Let's go back, look code again. So we got 72580. So this is our CSS ID selector. Now you're going to see here it has H1 after it. Okay. H1 says, if you come over here and look at the code, if you got, you got this div right here, which is representing the entirety of that headline wrapper. And it's got our CSS ID selector right here. Well, we want to change the text inside of that wrapper because most of the time in ClickFunnels, you're going to have like an outer wrapper and then you're going to have the thing inside. You're going to have an image wrapper and then an image inside. Here we have a headline wrapper and then we have the headline on the inside. And the easiest way to notate this headline that is inside of here is with H1. Now, in the past, and if you have a really old funnel, it may not have an H1 here because they changed this about six months ago. It used to be that all of these actual, the L headline element here, they all were just divs. 
they've changed those now so you're using an H1 tag if you use the headline element. It's an H2 tag if you use the subheadline element. And I think they're using a P tag now for the paragraphs, but I'm not sure. They originally didn't change that, but I think they have recently done that. So now, so in the past, we always had to use dot L headline. Uh, after the CSS ID selector. Now, because they have these H1 tags in here, obviously H1 meets headline one. And so because of that, we can just simply put in H1 and it just makes it just slightly easier to do. And so then we're saying H1, this H1 tag, this text element right here, we want to give it the text. That's all this means here is we're going to change out the text and the text is going to be whatever our slides current is. So it's going to be slides zero, slides one, slides two, slides three, and then again, rotate back to zero. And again, as I said, it will do this every two seconds and you've seen what it looks like over here. Okay, so now I explain that on this page because now we're gonna go into the page that I built with all the different sliders and I just thought it'd be a little easier to show you on that page. So here I use the exact same code as I had over on the Luxway site. And again, we see it uh, just doing its thing right here. And so let's go into the code and you're gonna see right here, it is exactly the same, except the only difference I made was because I couldn't use current because I have three more variations of the slider on the page. So I had to change the variables slightly just so each one was a little bit different because you can't use the same variables twice on the, uh, the same page. So all we did is we made a current text and slides text instead of the current and the slides. Otherwise, nothing else has changed on here at all. Now you're wondering, okay, can I also change out the CSS along the way? And of course you can do that as well. And let me just uncomment this really quickly and I will click on save and we will reload that page. And all I did with this, I said to make it uh, the color of red. I made the, um, the, I uh, gave it an underline and then I made a small caps for the font variant. And so of course you can come in and easily change your text out on the fly as you're going through all of this. So let me turn all of this off. So it's not a distraction as we're looking at the uh, rest of the elements on the page. So now the next slider I wanted to build was a background slider for these images in the background right here. So let me save this and we will reload the page and show you what that looks like. The uh, text will be turned off and just the images will be sliding here in the background. Now by slider, I don't mean it's gonna slide off the page. It's just gonna change out. Now you can do really fancy kind of sliders, slick slider and other ones like that, where you're gonna have the buttons and you're gonna have the arrows and all that. This is just purely like a slideshow. This is just purely like a movie playing in the background. But in this case here, we're just rotating four different images. And so, like I said, it's very simple, very easy to implement. There's no extra code really as far as like a, a JavaScript library that you would need if you're running Slick Slider. So we're going to take a look at it here. And there was a reason why I went through in detail how to get this set up and what everything meant because this is basically exactly the same thing. We set our current image to zero and then we set up our array of images right here. And all this is, is images that I have stored inside of the ClickFunnels database. And so let me just show you how you can find those. And I'm just gonna use this image element to get into the uh, ClickFunnels image editor is what I should say, not database, even though I guess it is a database too. So the easiest way to come in here and grab a hold of that uh, of that link of that URL you're going to need is just come in here right click on the image and we're going to say copy image address and then we will cancel back out of this go back into our tracking code and let's open this back up a little bit so we can see everything and I don't know which one it is but you would just come in here and just paste this in I don't want to paste it in because I might get the wrong one 
So that's all this is. Instead of up here where we had the text, be bold, be efficient, all that with quotes around it, down here what we did is we just dropped in the URL of the four different images that we want to trade out in the background here. Then again, we do the set interval function. We iterate through everything. So we go zero, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, like everything else. And then what we do here is I'm doing this for the section. So this is the entire section. Again, come up here, click on the gear, click on the, click on the hashtag and grab your CSS ID selector. And the only difference here is up here at the top, we were just saying we want to just change out this text. Well, in this case here, we need to change out the background image. And how you do that is you just come in here and you say it's going to be CSS because we can always set a background image using CSS. So we just say it's going to be CSS. And then we say background image with some quotes around it, a comma, and then quote and URL. And then inside of here, we put in basically what we had up here. Slides text, current text. Well, this one here is slides image, current image. You just got to make sure you get your syntax right with the quote marks and the plus signs and the, and the uh, curly brackets all in the right place. And in this case here, we're going to make this five seconds instead of the two seconds. So again, the only difference here is really this part of the line where we say instead of putting in text, Let's put in these background images instead. And again, when you're done, it looks like this. And it goes from one image to the next. I don't know why it flashed right there. Um, but it just goes, and it's flashing a little bit more than normal probably because I'm recording and it slowed things down. But it is pretty smooth. There's a little bit of a flash maybe sometimes. Uh, but the images should pretty much change out seamlessly because all we're doing is we're swapping one background image for the next so there should be no white space or anything else in between because there's nothing else showing there it's just flipping from one to the next to the next as you go through it so now the next one we want to take a look at is building it a little bit differently and we're going to come here let's just open this up and what we're going to do is we're going to swap out image elements. So let me show you how we did this on the page. So down here, I just have an image element like you would put in any image element. And so image slider one. So what I did is I came in and there's four of them on here. And I'll show you that in a second. There's four of them in here. And I named each one of them image slider one, slider two, slider three, slider four. I should have probably called it image slider zero through three, because that's the way they're indexed. But you know, there's only four of them, I know what's going on. And so then let's come up to our elements, and we're going to manage these. And we're going to come down and we're going to turn these back on. See the last three I've hidden, the first one I have visible, the last three I have hidden, as I turn them on, though, you're going to see one going over the top of another. And that's because I used a little bit of CSS and I said to absolutely position them. So there's always going to be an image here, but then as the other images show up, it'll be right over the top of it. So again, there should not be any flashing. There should not be anything else because there's always going to be an image in that position. So let me show you the CSS to make that what is known as absolute positioning. And so what I said here is data title is has in it so this basically means has is and it's not that's not the proper term for it but it's not equal to it says that go out and find any data title that has image slider in it because i had image slider one two three four so it just says basically go find all of the elements that have the data title that has or contains that's the word i'm looking for that contains image slider and we want to position that absolutely with in the element that is inside of. So we have an image here, and this image is inside of this row. And you can actually see the row border does not go all the way around it because we're absolute positioning inside of it, okay? So it says absolutely position that in there. And I put in top zero and left zero, probably didn't need that, but top, because it fills up the entire frame no matter what. So the top zero, Top zero says put it all the way up to the top, 
and then also put it all the way to the left. But again, it would fill up the whole space anyway, so I probably didn't need that. And then this here is really probably unnecessary as well. I just said, give this, this section here 100% of the viewport width as its height so that it would just take up a lot of space. And in fact, what I should have done here is not viewport width. I should really, this should really be viewport height is what that should have been. Okay. Now, and what that does is the next element, then it pushes that down below it so that it can't come up into that space. And I'll show you that again, because just for a second there it popped up into the space and uh, we don't obviously want that. So I'll just take that out. See this ex next element, which is the portfolio slider came up into the space because whenever you absolute position anything, whatever is below it wants to come up into that space. So you always have to be careful and deal with that if you have anything below what your absolute positioning. So we're going to put that VH back in there. So again, it's making this section 100% of the size of your screen. No matter what screen you're on, it's going to make it 100% the height of that screen. So now let's go back into the tracking code. So we saw how we had the elements over here. And all we're going to do is we're going to come in then and we're going to say, grab a hold of those elements. So for each one of these images, we again, we just went in, clicked on the hashtag, grab the CSS ID selector and put that in here. And so now again, it's going to go through zero, one, two, three of all of those elements. And then let's take a look at what we had to do here. So as we come in the first time, what we have to say to it is, Okay, so we have element zero here. We have, well, we have item, we have image zero. We're going to come in and what we're going to do is we're going to hide that one. So it's going to show on the screen for a little bit and then we're going to come in, we're going to hide and immediately then we're going to run through our condition here. We're going to decide which one we have to go to next and then we're going to show that one. And it's, it, you know, it runs it so fast in computer code that it doesn't show anything. You don't see any difference. So it's basically whatever's on the screen is going to hide it really quickly. And then it's going to take the next one in the order and it's going to show it. And because they're all sitting right on top of each other, it's just going to be hide, show, hide, show, hide, show, hide, show at, you know, the speed of light. And so you're not going to see anything. And again, it's going to rotate through every three seconds or 3000 milliseconds. So again, let's save this. And I don't think I showed you how that one worked yet. So let me come in here and we will stop my timer and we will also reload the page and we'll come down to it right here. And you're going to see the exact same thing as you saw above. It's just now we're using an element instead of a background image. So you could take these images and you could put them anywhere on the screen. You could have just a little thing going on over here in the corner while you have some other text and images and whatnot somewhere else on the screen. Now here's the one that I think, uh, especially the, the designers are going to like, and this is what I'm calling a portfolio slider. So what you can do is you go in and you got all your different portfolio images of what you, you know, different designs you've done for clients and things like that. And what you're going to do is just make a very wide image. So you go into Photoshop or GIMP or whatever. You could probably even do this in, um, what am I thinking? Um, uh, the slide making software. Why can't PowerPoint? You do it in PowerPoint or in Google Slides. You could probably do it in there. And all you could do is you take your images and you just butt them up side by side. And then when you're done, flatten the whole thing and just grab a hold of that image. I guess in uh, Photoshop or something, you probably just put them next to each other and then just even just do a screen capture of that uh, area. And then so you can get really wide on this thing. And then what you're going to do is you're going to come in and all it takes for this one here is some CSS code. We don't even need any JavaScript or anything else. So it is definitely the easiest one of the bunch. So let's come into our CSS. Okay, so the first thing I did was I came into this section right here and I took that image and made it the background image. So we're going to come in to our settings. We're going to come up to our images and where is that image right here? 
there it is right there. So this one right here, I had two different versions. I had one with only four images and I was, I was testing this because there's something I'll show you in a second that I'm, it, it's, it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense that it's always the same number because I tested this one that was five pictures wide and I tested one that's four pictures wide. So clearly the one that was five was much wider than the one that was four. And no matter what, I came up with the exact same code and I thought it should be different. So I'm still scratching my head a little bit on that one. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. And you just have to put in the numbers and just kind of play around with it a little bit. And that's this number right here that calculates the position of this image. So the first thing I'm going to show you here is we're going to use an animation function inside of uh, function is not the right word, but inside of CSS, we're going to use an animation and that animation is going to call this thing called slider. Well, that's this down here. So we have our keyframes name slider and we call it with this up here inside, uh, inside of that section. And we're going to make it go 15 seconds. I can change this here. Let's just make it do one second. And obviously it'll go back and forth much faster. And let's just make a compromise and let's go with 10 seconds. Now ease in and out. There's a lot of different functions you can use here. You can use ease in or ease out, ease in and out. You can use linear. I forget what the other ones are, but you can make it just so ease in and out means it starts off slow, speeds up, and then at the end it goes slow again. So slow, fast, slow as it's going back and forth across the screen. Alternate means go back and forth across the screen. If we were to take out alternate, it will just move one direction and then stop. So let me take that and it should at some point just stop here. Oh no, I, oh, I know what it does. It's, it doesn't stop, it goes back to the other end. If we were to have taken out infinite, then it will stop. So you see here it goes to one end and then it flips back to the other end. And so you could do that as well. And if you take out infinite, it'll just do it one time. So I'll put alternate back in. So now it'll go back and forth across the screen and show your consumer who's on the page all the different beautiful designs you have made, whether they're websites or you could use this for, you know, if you've got wedding pictures or anything like that, whatever you'd want to put in here. And then all we're seeing here on this slider is is 100 percent it'd be the equivalent of two see you can put in different steps you can say start at zero percent and then at 20 percent do something and at 40 percent or whatever numbers you want in there and it will step through it and def do these different things but we only got one function we want it to do and that's to go back and forth like this so we'll just set it at 100 percent like i said i could just put in the word two and it would have the exact same effect and um, I'll just leave it as two. And then what we're saying is take that background position because again, we set this image as the background image inside of, inside of this section. And I turned everything off there. And now we're gonna say we want to calculate where do we want this background position to be? And when you're looking at background position like this, it's like everything else, it's X and it's Y, it's width, and its height. So the first number we're going to set is going to be our x direction here, our width, and then we're going to set our height or our y positioning here. So we have our background position with our y, the second number here, that's going to be at zero. So we just want it at zero. We don't want it moving. We don't want anything else. If I were to, let's just put in 200 here. Um, let me see what's it going to do. Yeah, okay, so it's going to go down. You see what it's doing there. So we want to keep this at the top the entire way as it going across because, again, it's reacting to the fact that this is a slider and that it's just going to be moving back and forth across the screen. Well, here is the part that I was a little confused on and still I'm not 100% sure is you need to do minus 3,000 pixels plus 100% of the viewport width. Again, the first number is the width. And so if we did just viewport width, let me take out this part. Let me X that out. So we're gonna just say 100% of the viewport width. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna slide all the way off the right-hand side. Once it gets right to the edge, now it should come back right away. Because 
it's pushing the entire thing off. So it's taking whatever is on the very left hand side here and it's saying background position 100% of the width. Well, that position then says, okay, well, you got to go all the way over 100% of the width, which means it has to go completely off the screen. So in order to get this to work, I had to put in that minus, oops, not, don't want to do that twice, minus 3,000 pixels. And I tried different numbers. I tried 3,000. And like I said, I did this on two different size images. And I came up with the exact same number every time. So the point of my rambling here is you're going to have to go in, start with what I got, the 3,000. If that doesn't work, just try increasing the number a little bit, making a bigger, smaller, whatever it's going to take to get that thing to go back and forth properly on the screen. Now, one very fast last final note is pretty much most everything I just showed you really is not something you're going to want to use on mobile. So it's really nice on desktop, but most of these sliders, background videos, background images, a lot of time they don't work very well on your mobile devices. So just be aware of that. If you're thinking you're going to do this and you're going to build it and it's going to look beautiful on your mobile devices, chances are it probably won't. So that is it for today. Hopefully um, you guys learned a lot about how to use very simple sliders here. And if you got any questions, as always, just feel free to reach out. Have a great day.